Welcome back, fellow mayors, to Fisher Enclave City's season finale, where we create a nature reserve and find the right assets to build around a built in castle ruins in the map. This is Captain Obvious, and I thank you for joining me to the end of this incredible journey. I can only hope that you have been enjoying the city build so far. Before we can create our nature reserve around the castle ruins, we first need to reconfigure our monorail and train tracks. It wouldn't feel much like a re reserve when there are tracks running through the area. There is of course the option to make underground train tracks, but we made it to the last episode without creating any tunnels whatsoever. And that is always an accomplishment if you can manage traffic without resorting to emergency tunneling to avoid traffic. When it comes to track design, I prefer large curves and avoid creating any angled tracks. When possible, I also try to use the two-lane road with monorail, but lost favor of the four-lane road with monorail. I have been using that four-lane road with mono for many past cities, and now I choose to use that road sparingly. I do not want the nature reserve to be too large, so we will extend our residential zone area. For the most part in this continent, we have been using the two levels with the use of keys with stairs, which works great. However, on this side, I am going to opt to go old school and zone in a slope with the European themed buildings, which conforms best on slopes. The tricky part of this build are that the monorail tracks that go over the roads, which would definitely break your European themed blocks. Therefore, any blocks that have tracks through them, we can utilize the, uh, to zone the local and organic produce commercial buildings instead. I felt that this four-lane road went straight a little too far and it needed to curve at some point. Instead of making a Y interchange, we've converted it to a T interchange. And now it is just a matter of creating these zone blocks for more residents while trying to leave a gap within the block for a tiny courtyard with park or campus assets. While creating our blocks, I am again trying to compute the best way to divide the blocks while there is a monorail track running through the area. As much as possible, I am trying to create perfect blocks to zone in our high density buildings while the blocks with the track will be for the commercial area. At this point of the game, majority of the city demands are just residential and commercial with just a steady low office or industry demand. But regardless of the map theme, my commercial preference has always been the local and organic produce because it creates a height difference where these structures are the lowest height while the residential are mid to high rise buildings. We have just reconnected our entrance from the side toll booth and notice how I avoided to connect it directly to the avenue or the four lane arterial road. But for now, we will leave this as is because I just realized that the game has been running while our train tracks is disconnected. As much as possible, we want to avoid the track going through or near our nature reserve, so I will make the track run along the mountain interchange, which was the original plan when I first constructed this monstrosity. And another cool note about this track is how it passes the three toll booths. And lastly, we just need to connect this track to the other end. No tracks and no roads are allowed in our nature reserve, however, we do need a way for our sims to visit the area from across the river. I am going to use a road bridge as our guide to replace with the walking path bridge. 
And when it comes to the zone districts, I will make sure to finalize its borders considering that this is the final episode. And we will require at least one more tiny block to zone our European buildings and this block will be for high density commercial. I reserve the use of high density commercial only when there is a location that I want sims to visit. And in this case, we want people to be visiting our nature reserve. Let us not forget about adding the keys along our riverbank. On the other side, I will however utilize a key with stairs. There are several things to consider when adding keys to this particular build. First is the size of the stairs and the fact that a walking path has to either go on the bottom of the stairs or above. It all depends on how the game feels like doing. If it will allow us to connect to the top or the bottom, which both are definitely possible. Notice how I intentionally did not make the keys parallel all throughout. It is important to set a sense of variety and not make things too cookie cutter. You may also notice that I have not zoned anything in our new blocks. And that is because I am trying to minimize the amount of flooding that would affect our residents and other establishments along the riverbank. At this point, I was trying my best to connect the walking path to the bottom of the key stairs. I even tried to pull back the keys to see if it will work. And another thing that I noticed was that the nature reserve gate was a little too close to the keys, which makes it a little tricky to connect the gate to the key. So I basically had to pull the whole thing back ever so slightly. However, it is rather cool that I was able to place the walking path bridge directly on top of the staircase, which does not look half bad. Now I just have to reposition our nature reserve gate. Although when I took a second look, I thought that having two staircases did not make any sense when there is only one bridge. So I tried to redo the stairs and I also had to struggle with keeping it parallel to the gates. I assumed that the bridge would be slightly angled from the gate, but let us try nevertheless to align them together. Now it appears that our nature reserve gate is a little too far from the key. My apologies, but I will redo this until I am satisfied with the result. Okay, that is acceptable and I will now just connect our blocks to the main road and we can begin to work on the actual nature reserve. First, let us clear up the vegetation around the ruins so it will be more visible. And we also need to provide a dirt road to enter the ruined castle of where the entrance should have been. And the road will also serve as a path to enter the other castle that survived because this castle had extra protection, which was a moat around the structure. To create a moat or an artificial lake, you will need a deep hole to place your freshwater outlet. If the lake was shallow, then you will be able to see the freshwater outlets from above and it will instantly taint your build. Therefore, make it at least 30 levels deep. Another thing to consider when making artificial lakes with freshwater outlets is the fact that your lake will eventually overflow. So you need to create an artificial river. In fact, this current river here is also artificial. Here, check out the original map of the city before it was populated. And now we are here further expanding the rivers while including a lake. Notice how the freshwater outlet is functioning even when it is not powered. However, we do not want that no power icon to appear, so we will need electricity to jump all the way to the freshwater outlet. Also, it will take considerable time for our lake to fill up, so now is a better time than any to start zoning in our blocks. We will continue our city theme zone by having the actual zone across and not directly on the arterial road. 
and we will also align a fence with matching aligned trees. Notice how I am zoning commercial on the blocks with a monorail track through them, while the other blocks are specifically for our high density residential. On the other side, I continued the commercial zoning and on the slope, I plopped down a generic park which conforms to slopes. If your artificial lake does not fill in quickly enough, check to see if you have ample excess water. If not, then add a few more water towers or water pumps and it should assist in filling in your lake much quicker. I added a few more water towers scattered around the city near commercial or office zones. And of course, I did not plop down these structures too close to residential areas because water towers produces noise pollution. Throughout the entire city build, we have never used any water pumps or drain pipes. All our drinking water sources are from the water towers while we utilize inland water sewage. Since the introduction of Sunset Harbor DOC, I have kept all our water features inland that we may not disturb the lakes, oceans, and rivers. Other than finalizing our zone districts and park areas, I will also go ahead and redo the pipeline to make it go under the roads instead of the efficient pipe grid. Piping on the roads is a challenge much like my challenge is to complete a city without tunneling and maintain a decent traffic flow. So that is fair enough. Uh, so in future cities that I build, I will add road piping as an additional city challenge. Our lake still is not filled in, so I will take the opportunity to continue to add details around the new district. The fence with aligned trees is something that I really enjoy to add into the city theme but in the next city, we will slightly alter the design with a different format which includes how I create walking paths around the city. Oh hey, check it out! How exciting! The lake is starting to overflow and pour out into the three additional tiny rivers that we created. The roads and train tracks that lead to the cargo hub was redesigned to be more organic with slight curved tracks. While well, I made use of dirt roads to connect to the garbage area that leads to the mountain interchange. Not every road has to be perfectly straight. Lone roads are much more interesting when their direction is erratic with several curves. Let us start to add in some nature reserve assets around the castle ruins and around the moat. From now on, in every map that have castle ruins, we will create an artificial moat and include the Sea Fortress unique building from the Park Life DLC. I actually wanted to add in other European structures like the cathedral, but we unfortunately ran out of space. Another cool feature about the Sea Fortress Lake is how the river also flows into the canyon of the mountain interchange. This is really cool because seldom am I able to add water features around interchanges, but it may become a future challenge for future cities. Alright, let's take a closer look at our pedestrian bridge. And this is not exactly what I was hoping for. It looks a little funky here. It, there's like a barrier in order to get down, even though they don't literally walk down these stairs. But we should really be able to connect the path to the bottom of the key. And to do this, what we'll need to do is to add a terrain on the bottom just ever so slightly. And it should connect. Let, now let's try it. I'm going to remove snapping and that should help. If it still doesn't work, uh, let's... Yeah, it still doesn't want to connect to the bottom. Yeah, yep. Alright, let's raise the terrain a little more but try not to get that soil to appear there you go so when it disappears like this that means it will con it will connect and then let's try to make it go to the other side and it works there you go so it connects to the bottom but this does not look appealing um, we're gonna try something we're gonna try another version but try to take a mental picture of this so we have versions of which will be more acceptable. So I'm going to try to raise it from here. Oh, 
Okay, there you go. Here's our second version. Definitely a lot better than that curve. I mean, this is as good as it'll get, I suppose, uh, vanilla-wise. But yeah, that, that definitely does look a lot better. I accept this more. And of course, we can just trim off the, the soil afterwards. Um, another possibility is to connect it to the bottom of the key of in the other side. However, we didn't anticipate this because I did this probably like in the 20s or teens of the episodes and we're like now at the end so I didn't anticipate that this had to be exactly the same height so that is no longer a possibility at this stage so we're gonna have to do this nevertheless I'm going to show that it is possible to connect two bottom keys together first I'm going to create a save Okay, now that it's saved, I could always just reload that save point. And then I will just create a new one here. And there you go. So you can see that it is possible to connect two bottom keys together. And with this, it opens many possibilities like a canal city definitely and then you could also use bridges such as this and you would have a really really nice looking city okay the game is loaded and uh, so i mentioned that i wanted to add the cathedral here which is a really neat building and it would fit well with the theme this one so if i could like place it here so i'm gonna readjust the, the layout so that we could have it fit so at least we have three structures in our nature reserve okay there we have it so we have the sea fortress a cathedral and ruins they really look well together this view is really nice and then you got our artificial moat and let's do some finer detailing around especially this one I haven't done that and this looks a little funky actually this should be gone because that is way too high yeah that's that's not pleasing in any way so I think uh, let's not force to add that and let's just remove it Okay, there you go. Just very simple. It's a little thing here, so at least it's not as boring. Um, yeah, there you go. And yeah, I'm going to continue designing all throughout. Uh, I have this, like the thing that I miss when building uh, or throughout this series is finer detailing. Um, that's because I, I really enjoy the progress of the city, the way it grows. Um, yeah, that, that's the type of builder that I am. I, li I like to see the city grow. And sometimes adding too much details uh, is, is really time consuming. And I'm not sure what my audience uh, like is looking for. Are they looking for detailing? But since we are mostly vanilla, we, we don't have a, a lot of luxury uh, time or the ability to detail uh, the best as we can but I also just realized that it's also going to be interesting of what you can do even without the mods and with just the assets as provided so even just now um, even this is a little interesting already um, and then of course with that we could just add these things Oh, if you play on PC, the way I plop down rocks, so you notice uh, when you put down 
an object, it would stay in one direction. For example, this. So it, it remains the same direction the entire time. But you notice that this did not. What I do is I press both the left and right mouse button. So it, as I drop down, it rotates in the same time. So I don't have to like ro rotate it like this and then drop. So I just press both. Okay, so for now that's enough and but if you look really closely and you're going around it really looks neat you could also add some fences if you want to but i think that'll be a little too much and of course we can just continue to add more trees Okay, so all of this will eventually fill in. Um, let's check how the actual reserve is doing. See if there's a lot of people. 27. We are earning. It's not, it's not a whole lot. But it's definitely the, in the positive is always a good thing. But to promote more people to actually go into your parks, any type of park, that is when you start using the uh, tour, the walking tours. I have never showed this until now i just realized but yeah you can do this so i'm gonna create like let's say for one here which will go to the other side but as you can see it is not connecting to the other side but it does work as you can see it goes across the bridge right this however is not connected so i'm gonna try to reconnect this So the problem with this is you can't like literally connect it there because it shows like that there's already something there just bring it as close as possible and it should connect there that at least and then we can go back to our walking tours let me disable that and we put it oh it still doesn't want to there you go now it works so if it doesn't work the first time, just try to do it again. And it doesn't really matter where it goes. The, the point is, is you have the people use the gate in order for them to go around. So I'm gonna, then you can just place it anywhere. It doesn't actually matter as much. There you go. So there is a walking tour. What is this? Why does this show that it's disconnected? Is that considered disconnected or is it what? I don't I don't understand what that icon means. Warning, long tours are less appealing. Okay, I learned something new. All right, so let's delete that and make it shorter. Okay, there you go. All right, so I made it too long like twice, so I, I redid it again. And we can just create a new one, at least going to the other direction. So since we created a walking tour, I might as well just add the rest throughout the entire city. So this is our our zoo and i will create one starting from the station right here 
and it'll just go right in the middle going all the way across and rotate back and it's saying it's a little too long hmm, that is unfortunate okay let's try to drag it a little closer there you go i think they're happier Oop, let me move it here please there okay so they're happy uh it's not too long anymore all right let's continue adding throughout the rest of the city where there are parks so for example our amusement park island right here in the middle so i'll put one here so it's extremely purple so that is a lot of things to see so this one's a little funky it goes all the way around for some reason so i'm just gonna make it go here perhaps and then rotate back there you go as long as it functions and what we're looking at is that it hits the gate or in front of the gate so that they enter and go out so we're making a walking tour and at the same time we are also generating income and here we have our ferry which we will connect to the back so this is basically going through the eiffel tower okay it's not complaining i guess it's happy uh, we'll go the other direction this time from this monorail station okay and over here as well so we have a monorail station here so yeah i suppose that the pattern is trying to find your your stations and use that in order to promote uh, touring around your city there that is good enough here, here's a ferry line. This one's a, a little odd. This is our airport. So we'll go here into the kind of like the shopping mall. Nothing special there. Uh, here we have a ferry line. So it goes to the monorail station and then basically just goes back. Okay, so other than the walking tours, there's also the sightseeing bus. This is something not a lot of people use as well, which includes me, considering that I'm using it at the very end. But there's something really cool about this. It's the models of the buses. So here, let's create one. And this one, I will follow our collector or our avenue. And we're just going to stick to that and make sure it hits where our stations are, which is extremely important so that they could get to that station immediately. And then I'm, yeah, we're just going to try to keep it on the avenue as much as possible. There you go. And check this out. So the bus is coming out and look at it. Wait, let's change the color. Make sure it's our theme color. That's close enough. And check her out the double decker basically i think everyone has seen the airport's dlc trailer and you see the double decker is actually already in the game if you may not have noticed that is a lot of buses um we'll see if there's like a lot of people using that and all right let's just continue to add that like all throughout the city Towards the end, I filled in the courtyards with campus assets and I finally finalized the districts and piping. The city and season officially concludes by filling in all nine vanilla tiles. It is healthy with a 105k population with a traffic flow of 92%. It ticks up and down. 
but for the most part it is 91 92 and this is of course without the use of traffic manager not to mention that this city is completely without tunnels and looking at the city stats the city has no major death waves and the city also ends uh, with no education needs so there are no worker needs no goods needed no major issues uh, whatsoever or nothing visible that we can see the alerts are active as you can see these guys are just having some delivery delays and uh, basically this series is a showcase on what the game is capable of with minimal mods this is also my official second city that i have built and shared on youtube and I want to say thank you to everyone who came along with the journey and the new friends that we have met along the way. This may be goodbye to Fisher Enclave City, but soon enough, we will start a new map from the airport's DLC by the end of January. Until then, I will make other various videos such as a city tour and whatnot and others that I have mentioned. And I am also open to suggestions on what you guys want me to make. You can catch me in my socials and other channels and if you enjoy the series and have not yet followed already, please consider subscribing. This is Captain Obvious, signing out of Fisher Enclave City.